The killer bee came into the Americas in the late 50s. This, this honey bee, which is native to Africa, was brought into Brazil and it was going to be used there to produce honey and to be kept in hives. Well, it escaped. And this honeybee was able to colonize this huge area and just kept going. It was uh, about to get into Panama and go up through Central America. So there were at least two things to look at. One, did that honeybee push out the native bees? And two, the fact that there was a honeybee instead of some other bee to flower, what did that do to all the flowering plants that have to be pollinated by things like bees? I thought we'd see honeybees were displacing native bees from flowers and possibly they were going to go extinct. I could set up little experiments and see exactly those things happen with the patch of flowers or some part of the uh, tropics I was looking at. But I wanted to know what the big story was in the big tropical forest over a number of years. And that's where it got interesting. Mexico had a really big biosphere reserve where there were no honeybees yet, but they were going to arrive there a couple years down the road. So I set up studies first to look at native bees for a number of years and see how abundant they were and figure out what kinds of flowering plants they were using for food. Then the honeybees came in all by themselves and settled in, and then I could look at what those honeybees were doing and follow that over time. We collected data for 17 years. We saw things we didn't expect at all. All the native bees were more abundant than ever. They were still using an awful lot of the pollen from one of the favorite pollen plants or favorite flowers of the honeybee. We thought, now how did this work? They're, they were competing for the same food, but now they're using more of it than ever. Well, it turned out we actually knew something about that food and that plant. We knew that a seed made by those flowers would take about eight years to become a plant that flowers to provide more food for all the bees. So what, what fit our data better than anything else, and we'd never expected to see, was that in the long term, the honeybee made some of their best food sources so abundant that the honeybee could have their share, and all the native bees got even more than they used to. Uh, this was quite a surprise. This new competitor came in, it displaced bees that it was competing with, but it was pollinating the same food sources of, of all the bees, and it made those plants more abundant. And in the end, they were feeding more bees than ever because this new pollinator was doing a good job at pollinating and was actually a very abundant bee. So it, it did even more than what the native bees had been doing to pollinate the same plants. So the resource got bigger. So it's a fierce competitor, but it's actually feeding its, its, uh, its enemies. I was the first person who would dare to say this uh, exotic invasive bee that probably was going to change everything might actually be changing things for the better for, for all the native bees it was competing with. This was unheard of. And I thought, boy, if, if we didn't have this group of people working hard in the field for all these years, this would have totally escaped us and we'd never know that these killer bees were actually doing quite a lot for the local bees other than just being competitors.